Hello guys and girls and welcome to a new tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be covering this nice little vertex animation that I showed off on my Twitter uh, a little while ago and in the Discord. Uh, a few of you really wanted to know how to make this uh, and I'm going to show you guys how to make this before we go into more tutorials later on with the visual effects that you've seen me posting. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do all of those, I need to keep some of them secret for myself for my portfolio, okay? I can't have you guys having the same portfolio as me, gosh. But I'll be showing you guys how to make some of that. So don't worry, I'm not just posting them for no reason. I will be showing you guys how to make some of those. But today, we're going to be focusing on this cool little vertex animation here. And it's really easy. We've got two different versions here. We've got one that is more game friendly, which is this guy here, which is just a singular mesh. And then we've got these dudes here, which are less game friendly, but really nice for renders, which are two different meshes with two different materials that blend together to make something really cool. You wouldn't really want to do this in a game because it's rendering the object twice. I mean, with the lower poly one, so the purple one over here, it really doesn't matter that much. It's not that many more faces, but just, you know, be aware that if you're going to do this version, you're going to be rendering the object twice. So if it's not going to be something that you're going to have loads of in your level or your game, then cool, go for it. Uh, use this one. If you want to have a lot of them, we're going to be using this one. But I'm going to show you how to put both together. And we're going to start with the fancy one that's made up of two parts, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to create a new material. And I'm just going to call it, let's just call this, uh, well, I don't know what we're going to call it, but which we, we'll call it vertex outer underscore M. And then we're going to open this guy up, <clears throat> excuse me, and we're just going to change the blend mode to translucent because we want to be able to see through this. And then we're going to set this to unlit because we're going to be using the actual emissive on this. We don't need a base color. What you're going to have now is just a black sphere. This is fine. This is currently what we want. Now for our nice, nice fancy thing, uh, you're going to be needing a specific kind of mesh. And I am going to provide that with, uh, with this tutorial. There'll be a link in the description so you can get the mesh. And you're also going to need a texture that will be in the same downloads folder. And that's just going to allow us to pan the animation around. And I'll explain why we need a certain kind of mesh once we get to that section. I will show you guys, don't worry. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a nice little panner that will activate where we can see the vertices moving. To do this, we're going to need our texture. So we're going to hold T, left click for texture sample. And we'll open this up. And I believe I've called it line underscore T. There we are. And this is just a gradient, which is nice, just black and then some white on the outside. And the white is going to determine which parts of our mesh are moving, and the black is which parts are not going to be moving. To use this, however, we're going to have to multiply this by a different value. So hold M and left click, and we'll plug this into our multiply, like so. And then we're going to plug this into the world position offset, and this is what's going to move our vertices. To do this, we're going to be using vertex normal world space vertex normal world space and what this does is it checks where our vertices are in world space but then it uses the normal of that vertex and i'll explain that in just a moment we're then going to hold m and left click for a multiply we'll plug this into the multiply and into our previous multiply then we'll hold s and left click for a scalar parameter and we're going to call this push amount and this is what's going to control how far out we push these verts now then we can test this out, right? So we can apply this. And because we've made this a scalar parameter, what we can do is we can right click our material and create an instance. And now if I was to say, grab our lovely mesh here and just place this instance on this mesh, you can see not much is happening because we're not currently pushing anything out. But if we get a sphere as well, just a regular sphere here, so use one of my meshes and then a regular sphere. You see this is nice and smooth. If we place this on as well, when we open up the instance and we tick push amount. If we were to scale this up, you'll notice that our low poly one is splitting, but our smooth one is just kind of breaking and pushing outwards. And this is because of how normals work. Now, not normals is in a normal map, but normals is in on a mesh. Let's open up Photoshop. Do 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 do. Right. So here's some uh, some theory for you. Right. Let's grab a brush shrink him down. Let's say that we have two faces. We have a face that's going this way and we have a face that's going this way. We have some vertices. 
So let's just grab red for our verts. We have a vert here, we have a vert here, and we have a vert here. Now, what our normal is doing is it's checking which way that face is currently facing. So if we were to grab green for our normals here, and you can check this in 3D software too, this vert is facing this way, right? Which is fine. This vert is facing this way. Ooh, we don't want an extra line facing this way. This one's facing this way or whatever. We've got a single vert and a single normal here for two faces. And this is how smoothing works. So this would actually be kind of like stretched around. And this is what smoothing does and it will make things look smooth. Without smoothing, what happens is this vert will get split into two normals. Oops. We'll get one normal going this way, one normal going this way, and that splits it and creates a hard edge. Uh, creates a hard edge. We can do the same here. And we can do the same here. What vertex normal world space is is it's going to take these normals and it's going to push based on the normal value. So it's going to take this face. See, so it's got a normal going this way and a normal going this way, and it will take this whole face and push it out. If we have a smooth face like here. It's going to take both of these and it's going to average them and it's going to push them both out in the same directions because they're smooth. And that's how normals work. And that's why on the lower poly, non-smooth mesh, it splits. And on the smoothed higher poly mesh, it doesn't split. And that doesn't mean that you can't have a higher poly mesh because this is a higher poly mesh here, but it has no smoothing. And that's why this works. So there you go, some little theory for you. Oh, fancy, fancy theory. All right, let's open up the material again, <laughs> now that we're done explaining that. And we're just going to create the last little bits of this. So we want this to actually move around. We don't want it to just sit in one place on our mesh. And to do this, we're going to use what's called a panner. And what a panner allows us to do is it allows us to move a texture in a specific direction. Now, our coordinates, we don't want to change it. We just want our line to stay the same size. So we're going to leave the, the coordinates alone as well as the time. Time, we're just going to leave how it is. But we are going to have a customizable speed so that you can decide how quickly you want this to animate. To do this, we need to plug a value into speed. But we don't want this to just be a singular value because speed is going to determine both the x and the y coordinates, which is going to be up and sideways on our texture. We just want this to pan to the side, which should be the y, I believe. But to access just the Y, we're going to need two values to plug in here. So we're going to hold S and left click, and we'll call this speed X. And we'll just copy and paste this and rename this to speed Y. Then what we're going to do is we're going to combine these two together with something called an append. And what an append does is it allows us to take two different values and then place them into a singular value in the order that they're added. So right now, speed X will be value one, speed Y will be value two. And in speed, you can see that we have two values, speed X and speed Y. So A and B, X, Y, plug this into speed, and I'll be able to change these values, and I'll change the speed. If we apply, we can test this out as well. So we'll minimize this down. And again, inside of our instance, we'll now have our X and our Y speeds. And if we just increase Y to maybe one, we want our x to actually be increased there we go x is the sideways you'll see now we are actually getting this going across so we'll just put our y back down to zero or we'll just turn this off so now you can see x we is going around lovely jubbly it's working all right so back to the actual material we need to now make this look fancy so it's working we have our animation going the way that we want it to to go but how are we going to make it look all lovely well we're going to use opacity straight from our texture because on this first version, we just want our, uh, our pushed out areas to be visible. So we're going to plug this opacity straight in. And you'll see now we just get this nice black area, which is showing us where we can see. And now we need to create the color on the outside. And to do this, we're going to use a Fresnel. And what this will do is, depending on the angle that we're looking at an object at, it will change the colors of the edges. And now what we're going to do is hold S and left click for a scalar. And we're going to call this the outline. And we'll plug this into the exponent and we're going to default this at seven. And then for our base, ref, uh, base reflect, we're going to hold S and left click again and we'll call this center. And we'll plug this in to the base. And now this is going to give us a nice black and white. And if we start previewing, then on our sphere, we'll be able to see this. And you can see how we're getting this nice glow around the edge. That's exactly what we want. 
Now what we'll do is we're going to use a lerp. So hold L and left click. And what a lerp allows us to do is it allows us to change on between two values. We can blend between two values based on an alpha, which is black and white or grayscale. We know that this is going black to white, so we can plug this straight into the alpha. And then this will determine where we're changing our colors. Now we need two colors to go in here. We'll hold three and left click and we'll just plug black straight into the A because we don't care about what's on the inside. We just care about what's going on the outside, which is our B. So we'll hold V now and left click for a vector parameter and we'll call this color. We'll plug this straight into the B and we'll give this a nice default value. I'm going to call it green. Call it green. I mean, I will select green. And then what we're going to do with this is we're just going to multiply this. Hold S and left click for a scalar and we'll call this glow intensity and we'll plug this into B. We'll default this at maybe 10. And then we'll plug this into our emissive color like so. We'll apply. There we go. Now we're getting this nice green glow all the way on the outside, but we can only see the black on a certain side. Now, if we go back to our nice little guy here, you see we we're getting this nice cool little thing. It's not quite working the way that we want it to work right now because we need to add our actual um our panner into the glow because right now we're leaving the black behind with the color. So what we will do here is we will drag our multiply and our intensity over. We will hold M and left click for a multiply. We'll grab our color, plug this in to our multiply, our texture also into the multiply. And then what we'll do is we'll hold A and left click for an add, put our lerp and our new multiply, and plug this into the multiply for our intensity. Press apply. And now we'll add those two values together. And you can see here now we're getting this nice intense green glow where our verts move and we're just getting the nice glow on the outside at all times. And this has given us now the first section of this nice thing. Now we need to create the version that doesn't move at all. And that's really, really easy. So what we can do here is we can right click the outer, duplicate this, and we will call this inner. Like so. We'll quickly grab our little mesh here, make a duplicate, get the first, right click, copy the location, and paste the location in a second so they're on top of each other. Then with our inner, we'll create a material instance really quick. And we'll just drag this into our mesh here. So we can see it moving. And you see now, because it's using the default values again, it's not moving. So now we can see we have two meshes there, both doing different things. We'll open up the inner material. This guy, we don't need any sort of opacity. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to a opaque material. And that will get rid of our opacity. So now it's just solid. We don't need to push the well position so we can unplug this and we can get rid of all of that. The panner we also don't need so we can get rid of the panner. We're not moving anything around the edge so we can get rid of the texture, which means we can get rid of our multiply. We can get rid of our add. We can just plug our lerp into the multiply like so. Now you can see that we've just gutted out our original material and added a new one in. We press apply. Then you can see we have the nice result that we have on the previous. There we go. Cool, right? And now that we have our instance of this too, what we can do is we can turn on all of our parameters and we can say, you know what, I actually want this to be more of a red. We'll save that color there. Like so. And we'll open up the second instance. Turn on color. Make it the same red. Like so now you can see how you can really create some rapid effects using this, right? But what if we want this to all be on a singular material? Well, if we just want this to be on a singular mesh rather and all happen in a single material, it's we can't get the exact same effect, and that's because of the normal world space. Because we're pushing normals, we're changing the mesh. So to get this exact effect in a singular material is impossible because the verts can't be in two places at once, they can only be in one place. But we can make it look like we're using two things at the same time. To do this, we're going to take our outer material. We'll 
duplicate this again. And we'll call this vertex combine underscore M. We'll just drag a new copy of this guy over. We'll give this the combined version like so. And we'll open this up. And much like before, we, we know we don't need opacity. So we're going to get rid of our opacity. Let's see, we're going to set this to opaque because we don't care for the opacity at all. We don't need to see through this because we want solid to be behind our mesh. We apply this and we create a material instance here. Place that onto the mesh instead. Open the instance up and we'll change the speed X, the color and the push amount. The push amount will set to maybe 15. See here it's pushing it outwards, nice. Our color will leave green for now. You can change it to whatever you want to, it really doesn't uh, really want to affect. We'll put it at 0.5 for the speed so it's a little bit slower than this guy, just so we can see the difference. And you can see how we're getting this nice black, but they're staying there the entire time. The only difference is now we can still see through the back of the mesh. So what we'll do is we'll open up the original mesh and over in the details, we're gonna turn on two-sided and we'll press apply. And now we'll be able to see the back of the material through itself like so. So we get a nice combination of effects. There we go, it's really simple. Uh, just remember that it won't work on any uh, smoothed surfaces. I believe these aren't smooth, so we should be able to see something pretty cool if we were to put this on this guy. Same with the stairs, we can get some really cool effects on the stairs, like so. And because they're not smoothed, you can see that it's actually splitting it and it's working nicely. Wee, go stairs, go. Wee, pretty nifty. Um, but remember, smooth objects won't really work out very well. Not sure if this is technically a smoothed object, it probably is. So this won't push it properly here. Pushes the bottom. You get this nice little, it's doing the worm, yeah! And the reason because of this is because of the way that normals work. And if a smooth object exists, its normals are shared across faces that are smoothed out. And they'll be pushed together, like you can see there. But there you go everybody, there it is! Lovely, jubbly. Nice and tasty. Wee, look at this site, so cool. Uh, these are just different meshes, obviously. I'm going to give you all these meshes. It really doesn't matter. They're uh, uh, just spheres at different levels of uh, detail. And then they've got different instances on them so that we can see the different colors and, you know, just be fancy. So there you go. Have fun with that. Hopefully you've learned something new. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's been a while since I've been my last tutorial. I've been super busy. But there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.